Yeah, so you can see that a lot of people actually pay a lot of money to torture themselves in gyms. You know, and it obviously makes them happy. So, you know, the situation is that we have to fake effort. Today, the economy is so advanced that nobody even has to move. So we've discovered that biologically or aesthetically, it's not pleasant. So people, uh, people pretend as if they need physical exercise and then they go to these artificial gyms. And, but in fact, you don't need muscles anymore to fight. You don't need muscles to survive. So many habits that have made us get here are no longer necessary. They are redundant. And what's a little bit scary that if this level of specialization drops a little bit, say, for example, we lose internet. 20 years ago, Nobody needed it because it didn't exist. Yeah? Today, if internet were to break down this second, this could possibly mean a collapse of our civilization uh, because we've become so, so, so dependent. Same thing with electricity. You know, so, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, we lived happy lives without electricity. Today, it's absolutely unimaginable. So, uh, you know, in this way, the society is artificial not only in its supply but mainly in its in its demand the problem today is not the economy of supply i would even say the economy of de uh, the demand to create desires to create demand it's not a problem to produce the problem is to sell so one of my favorite methods is try to take an eyes of somebody who lived in the past or in the future and to look on our society so if we take if we took, I don't know, a medieval person or even uh, Plato or Socrates, if they would live today, if you would teleport them to today, they would find that when we, when we work, they would think that we are resting. Because what is the nature of our work? Basically, we sit down, we drink coffee, tea, we talk with each other. Uh, so they would consider this leisure. Right. While when we leisure, we run around, we go to exercise gym, we, you know, we, we tilt our gardens. He would, think, he would think that we're working. Okay. So, so my point is how what you define as, as value, <clears throat> what you define as leisure and what you define as work is, I would even go as far as to say largely random or culturally determined. A stupid, sorry, last example is, I take it from Dan Ariely, he's a wonderful Israeli economist, who wrote this book, Rationally or Predictably Irrational, mm -hmm. in which he says that the, the value of pearls, black pearls, was zero. So when a diver opened up an oyster and it had a black pearl, they would throw it back into the sea. <coughs> it had no value. So then somebody comes up with a nice little marketing strategy and suddenly these black pearls are very highly valued. That's all. Yeah. So, and the same thing goes, the same thing goes for work. He, he says there's an interesting paradox. People are willing to do, and this is where we come to your charity thing that you noticed. People are willing to work for free, yeah. but when you pay them, they work less. So he has this famous example of, of blood. Mm -hmm. there, was <coughs> there was a shortage of, of human blood. I don't know where, I think it was New York, I'm not sure. So the, the, the authorities went to some advisor group and they said, oh, you know, of course you have to give people incentives, so pay people more. Um, and they give less. For, for, and, and other examples, for that yeah, yeah, dynamic, and, yeah. Exactly, and, and the result was that people gave less, less blood because suddenly you move from the, from the charity. It, yeah, because it, it's feeding your understanding as a dignified person because now you are paid and yes. it, it's, it, it's switching into a different department of yes. your personality and you are, do not need to give blood for being paid, but you wanted to give blood for being uh, an honorable person. So maybe we come back exactly to this experience. So this is, this is maybe yeah. the most radical example of exploitation of other person. I buy your blood. Yeah. I mean, how more could yeah. it be expressive? So people don't mind when they, when, when they give their blood mm -hmm. in a charity fashion, mm -hmm. let's say, but the moment you start paying, they feel exploited.
because mm -hmm. it is against our culture to be selling my blood mm -hmm. for money. And so maybe this, are, I, we are coming to an interesting point, is where people start perceiving it's the same thing at the end, but one person feels honored that he can give blood, yeah. the other person feels humiliated yeah. so that he can sell blood. So maybe this, is, this, this could be um, an interesting dividing line in this uh, market, uh, charity, and the whole idea of, of exploitation. Mm. But what you are saying, you are saying um, basically we, there's maybe no escape from fetishism. Yes. Uh, slash belief. Yeah. Slash religiosity. Yes. Uh, And slash ideology. Yeah, and uh, I, c I can go with that. But this is from fetish is a, is a negative connoted thing and a, a religious longing or something, maybe something yes. basic, uh, basically human. Uh, and the so longing for dignity, to, to have a story about myself that I can be proud of and others uh, acknowledge this kind of story. But this me. This means uh, that we cannot define what is additional value in general on a content level. Yeah, yeah. But we could think of an economi economical system that is over and over discussing in yes. an important way what our fetish is now and how we can keep it limited. Yes. Yes. That's a self growth dynamic of a fetishism yeah. can be limited, but you say the, the phenomenon that also leads to exploitation cannot be determined. Yes, yes, and this leads to, to big religious, let's say, and philosophical topics. Mm -hmm. Ever since the first archetypes uh, were discovered, such as being unable to be content with what I have, Mm -hmm. wanting to grow and tended to fetishize random things out of reality. So mm -hmm. to me fetish is in an ideal situation my psychological time space continuum is flat. Well ideal, this is not ideal, this is without any gravitational field. Mm -hmm. And there suddenly emerges a gravitational field, a woman, money, work, fetish. Ide that, idea who, who I could be. Or an, idea an, who I could an, be. An yeah. image. Of yes. And it curves my time-space yeah. bandature. So when you are in love, blindly in love with a woman, <coughs> you see everything through her. What would she say? Da, 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 da. You don't even see the reality. Everything is curved by yeah. her gravity, let's say. Yeah. Um, so um, while we cannot escape fetishes, we should try and have a um, uh, few to, to be able to orient yourself in it and to know that these are fetishes. I think if you name the fetish, like with demons, if you know the name of the demon, this is of course classical demonology. If, if, in exorcism, this is, this is why I love my job, you know, I can even go and study exorcism as part of my, part of my, uh, part of my research. You first have to know the name of the demon. Once you know the name of the demon, you're half the way. Mm -hmm. So maybe, <coughs> maybe this is the way it also works in, in, in society or our internal. Um, society, yeah. uh, that if you know your fetish and you know that this is something that you have a problem, half your, half your, half yeah. your way self. And but That's back, back to this, back to this um, idea of blood. It's interesting that we came to this because this is the classical archetype of a vampire. Yeah. You know, vampire is something that takes your life. It exploits you. Usually in the movies, you will notice that vampires are aristocracy and they feed on the poor peasants. So you could also read this, or Slavoj Žižek reads this in a way of, um, of a social critique, that these vampires are really representatives of capitalists mm. who exploit human beings in the most literal meaning of the word, mm -hmm. leaving them uh, bloodless. And in economics, uh, anyway, in classical economics, but still you can, Here it today, money is often uh, used as uh, explained as blood system. Yeah, yeah the circulation of money is like blood. And and the interesting of uh, point at this uh, vamp vampire is 
uh, he or she doesn't have a life of him Fitzroy. or herself. That's, that's brilliant. Yes, and that's brilliant. this is also a good part of the metaphor. The more I I do not have a life of myself or lose the life of myself, brilliant. the that's, more that's I, n- I need to be exploitative. As a succubus, yeah. somebody who sucks the life out of somebody yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. This is of course also zombies. This is perhaps we don't know why they attack us. You know, even this is a big paradox in the movies. They never, if even if they catch somebody, yeah. they never finish him. It's, they, you know, they my, just yeah. bite him and they don't. They, you know, so of course. Yeah, and 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 we have this this uh, untold in German. It's non undead. Undead. undead yeah. The, and uh, from a psychological standpoint, you can say these are souls who could not find peace. Yes. Because they did not find meaning in life. And this is why they cannot say goodbye to life. And this is why they have to torture others. Um, so that it's an, um, a substitute for being alive, is being uh, in, in a lot of threat and fear and defensive and excitement meant of a negative kind uh, and from a psychological standpoint this is also true uh, in reality now people are uh, they are drunk from being excited this has also to do with your uh, pendulum uh, because they lose a sense of what's the, what is really life's feeding because if it hurts it's alive yeah. So they hurt, they ca- cannot cause life, in, or they cannot maybe perceive life in anything else except for the hurt. At, at the pathological, at the pathological uh, edge, edge of life. Right. Right, yeah. And what, as a psychologist, uh, what we try, and also as an organizational developer, is help organizations, individuals, to get more a sense of what is, is essential to them. Certainly this is historical bounds, this is individuals, this is a milieu question of what do they feel as being alive and being valuable, but we invite them at least to communicate with themselves around this, dream work, all these things, but uh, uh, working with inner images, what we do a lot, but also to um, communicate with others Mm. about it, because and this is also with companies. What is the reason why this company is on the market? Not only for making money, but what, is there any idea what we can contribute uh, to human welfare? Because more and more young people come in and say, I do only work here if it makes sense to me what we produce and how we produce. So. Um, we do what we can to, to support She's getting in touch with meaningful fetishism. Yes. Yep. On an individual level, on a private level, on a professional level, on an organizational level. What we do not so much, maybe you, you deal more on that level, is on a, on a historical uh, society story level. And some, some publishers say we're still lack, lacking a new story. <laughs> 